All right, guys, so welcome to lecture one, the first law of thermodynamics. So we all know that uh, thermodynamics falls under physical chem, one of the five major disciplines of chemistry. So here we will discuss the first law. The topic outline is here. On the next slide, we have system and surroundings, types of systems, heat and work, internal energy, enthalpy, thermochemical equations in telerimetry, state versus path functions, Hess law and thermochemical derivation. So I'm doing, I'm doing my best to speak as slowly as possible. You know? Okay, this lecture was developed based on the following. Of course, we have Chang, Silverberg, and Witten. Chang is our main reference for uh, this lecture. The intended learning outcomes are the following. So after using this module, you should be able to, number one, explain the energy changes during chemical reactions, distinguish between exothermic and endothermic processes, perform work in heat calculations, of course, explain the first law of thermodynamics, write the thermochemical equation for a given chemical reaction, calculate the change in enthalpy of a given reaction using Hess law, perform mathematical derivations, and Differentiate state from path functions. Okay, so we start with this one. From this point on, we shall refer to these three classifications when describing or dealing with things. First, system. When you say system, it's the one being studied. When you say surroundings, it's everything else but the system. And system plus surroundings would be equal to the universe. So let's consider this photo of jet on top of Mount Kula. Okay. If you were to study this jet here as a system, everything inside jet is the system and everything outside belongs to the surroundings. Example, the tall grass at the back, that's part of the surroundings. The sky above, part of the surroundings. The soil, part of the surroundings. The jacket is still part of the surrounding. Uh, jet, no, is the system. So lahat ng nasa loob, system yun. So sabi dito, jet's jacket and shirt belong to the surroundings as well. When you add jet and everything you can imagine, that would be equal to the universe. You, including you at home, no, you belong to the surroundings. We have three types of systems. And on three types, first, the open, the closed, and the isolated. For the open system, no, matter and energy are both allowed to pass in and out of the system to the surroundings. For the closed, only energy is allowed to pass through, so no matter. And then for the isolated, energy and matter are both not allowed to pass through. Okay, let's try to classify the following systems. We have the human body as number one, a mug of hot coffee, and an open mineral water bottle, a sealed rice cooker containing hot rice, and a Starbucks thermos double thermal wall tumbler, assuming that the heat is contained throughout eternity. So there's an assumption here because theoretically, no, the heat in that tumbler will not be there for eternity. So first, human body, this is obviously an open system, of course, because matter and energy are allowed to pass through in and out of the body, right? So, so energy, heat can pass through. For the matter, of course, you have your sweat, you have your urine, saliva, you have food, etc., which can get in and get out of the body. No? So it makes that an open system. You have a mug of hot coffee that's also an open system because, of course, you can pour water into the mug and then you can remove coffee. You can drink the coffee from the mug. And an opened uh, mineral water bottle, this is a closed system because, of course, energy can pass through. However, matter will not be able to pass through in the usual circumstances because it's closed. So one is open, two is open, three is closed. A sealed rice cooker containing hot rice, this is also a closed system because only energy is allowed to pass through. Finally, number five, of course, assuming that the assumption is true and it's, the heat is contained throughout eternity, so therefore this is an isolated system. Okay, so I hope you got five over five in uh, that example. Okay, let's go to heat and work. So let's review your basic concepts your basic chemistry and physics concepts on heat and work. For heat, of course, this is the energy transfer as a result of temperature changes and differences. So if you have temperature changes and differences, it's because of the 
intake and release of heat as a form of energy. While work, that's energy expanded to move an object against the force. So let's review your physics, uh, basic lessons in physics rather. Your work would be equal to force times distance. For chemistry, heat, Q is equal to mc delta t, where Q is the heat evolved, usually in joules or kilojoules. M is the mass, C is the specific heat, delta T is the change in temperature. We denote heat as positive Q if it's endothermic and negative Q if it's exothermic. When you say endothermic, the heat is absorbed to the system. So the transfer is from the surroundings to the system. While if it's exothermic, it's from the system out to the surroundings. For work, we denote work as positive or positive W when work is done on the system and negative when work is done by the system. Work is defined as negative P delta V for chemistry. We will be tackling that later. Okay, before we go on to grade 12 level thermodynamics, let's consider solving these basic problems. Okay, number one, Robbie needs to heat 250 ml of water so she can properly dissolve the assigned laboratory solid. Calculate the amount of heat in joules required to raise the temperature of her water sample from room temp, room temp is 25 degrees Celsius, to 100 degrees Celsius. Specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So here, this is a straightforward calculation because we're only asked to solve Q. So Q lang ang iso solve natin here. We will, we're asked to solve Q. We know that Q is equal to MC delta T. So we can arrive at Q is equal to 250 grams multiplied by the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, multiplied by delta T. Delta T here is Tf minus Ti. The final temp is 100 and your initial temp is 25. So you're, you have a delta T of 75. So you know that Q is equal to 78,450 joules or 7.8 times 10 to the fourth joules, okay? We just have a note here, remember, that specific heat refers to the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one unit, either by Kelvin or by degree Celsius. So for water, if you have, let's say, one gram of water, which is at 20 degrees Celsius, you need to apply 4.184 joules to make the temperature of that one gram of water to 21 degrees Celsius, okay? Okay, for visual learners, let's take a look at this one. This is the uh, scenario for problem number one. You have 250 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. You input 7.8 times 10 to the fourth joules as the amount of heat, and then you get still 250 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So this, amount of heat will raise the temperature of 250 grams of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Okay, number two, let's try solving these basic problems. Okay, again, calculate the specific heat of a new alloy if a 15.4 gram sample absorbs 393 joules when it's heated from 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius to 37.6 degrees Celsius. Comment on your answer. Okay, solution. So we're given, we are given Q, Q is 393, we're given the mass, 15.4, and we're given the TF and TI. Your initial is zero, your final is 37.6. So 37.6 minus zero is 37.6. Therefore, that's your delta T. So you just do some basic math. We could calculate C, and we can find it to be Q over M delta T. So using basic stoichiometry, or rather not, not stoic, but just uh, dimensional analysis, you would see that the Q, oh, this is not Q. This is C, this would be C, no? Mimalian, C, C. C here would be equal to 0 0.697 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So, Ano ibig sabihin nito? Now, this is a specific heat. You need 0 0.679 joules of heat to raise the temperature of one gram of this alloy by one degree Celsius. Again, now we correct this one. This is C. That's the specific heat, not Q. Okay. This time, try to work. Uh, let's try to work on our own and answer the following. So, we have two 
uh, problems here. Native gram sample of ethanol and Iron Man suit. Okay. Okay. You can, you can pause the video to answer, but I will continue now. Okay. Number three. Everything else is given except TF. TF, remember delta T is equal to TF minus TI. So you can solve TF from there. Using Q is equal to MC delta T, no? So delta T, ito, yung delta T na yan, that's TF minus TI. Therefore, TF is equal to Q over MC plus TI. TI here, no? Is, mm, where is that one? 50 degrees Celsius. So you, we denote negative Q or neg uh, five, we use negative for 5904 kasi it's exothermic, no? So nakalagay dito, releases. Releases 5904 joules. So when you say releases, it's from the system to the surroundings. Therefore, your Q will be negative. That's why we have a negative sign before 5904 joules. Over M, C. M is 80 grams. C is your specific heat. It was, it's given 2.4 to 6 joules per gram degree Celsius plus 50 degrees Celsius. So TF is 20 degrees Celsius. So again, we note that Q is negative because the heat exchange is exothermic. Thus, 5904 joules of uh, heat was released to the system, to the surroundings rather. And as you can see, your final temp here is lower than your initial temp. So that's another, uh, that's another sign for you, uh, that's another implication that your heat is negative. Solution for number four, we do the same thing, but this time we solve for Q. No? You will notice that the initial temp is uh, 120 and then your final temp is 50. So you see here again that your final temp is less than your initial temp, therefore, your delta T would be negative and Q would be negative as well. So the reaction is exothermic, which you could easily know because sabi dito, calculate the amount of heat needed to be released here. You can see there, needed to be released by this 260 gram suit to bring down the temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. So Q here is negative uh, 15,230 joules or negative 1.5 times 10 to the 4 joules. Again, this is exothermic. Okay. So that's heat, Q for you, no? Q, it's always equal to MC delta T. All right, moving on to work. So let's remember your concept of work in physics, no? In physics, work is defined as force times distance. Therefore, if force is applied, but no movement is seen, therefore there is no work. Chemistry follows suit, defining work as W is equal to negative P delta V, where P is your pressure and delta V is your change in volume. So you can see here, delta V is equal to Vf minus Vi. Thus, if there's no change in volume, then delta V is zero, so, so will work be equal to zero. Let's consider this one. Let's consider this cylinder, no, piston, with these gas molecules, the red are gas molecules, and then you have external pressure pressing down the piston. So this is your Vi. After wards, this one becomes this one. So there's a compression in terms of volume. So this is your VI, this is your VF, correct? Now your VF is less than your VI. So see VF now, no, here, VF is less than VI for obvious reasons. You can see here in the illustration, no? Mas maliit ang volume ni VF kesa kay VI. So if VF is less than VI, therefore, delta V will be less than zero. Bakit yun less than zero? Kasi kung ito ay mas maliit, mas malaki to, no? Therefore, VI, or uh, therefore delta V will be negative. Example, this is, let's say this is 4, this is 2. So this is 2 minus 4, so we will have negative 2. And negative 2 is less than 0. So if your delta V is less than 0, we go back to the equation of work here. If your delta V is less than 0, your work will be positive because you have a negative sign before P. So if it's a negative, times another negative, you will get a positive work. So thus, work will be greater than zero. This means that work is done on the system. Kabalik tara naman ng kabila, no? If your uh, VF is greater than your VI, 
Now here, Vf is greater than Vi. Therefore, delta V will be greater than zero. Thus, work will be negative. Uh, will be less than zero. Because if this is positive, you have a negative sign here. Positive times negative, work will be negative. And this means that work is done by the system. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. This is work in ideal gas processes. No. If you have an isochoric process, when you say isochoric, no, the volume does not change, so delta V is equal to zero, work is equal to zero, isochoric. If you have an isobaric, no, bar, baric meaning pressure. So your pressure is constant and the volume changes by delta V, the usual Vf minus Vi, work is simply negative P delta V. In an isothermal process, when you say isothermal, constant temperature, the work done during the process is equal to negative nrt ln vf over vi which is also equal to your negative pi vi because remember ito, this negative nrt is just equal to pv if you have your ideal gas law no? no it's also equal to pf vf ln vf over vi so remember if you have an isochoric this one isobaric this one if you have an isothermal this one okay let's solve one of the problems here okay how much work is done by a gas that expands from 5.7 liters to 12 liters? So this is your VI, this is your VF. Against an external pressure of 750 mmHg, this is your pressure. This is millimeters due to mercury. So uh, we convert that first to ATM. The question, was the work done by the system or on the system? Express final answers in joules. Okay, let's take a look at the solution. So use W is equal to negative P delta V, but first convert 750 mH to ATM. We know that uh, from our lessons in the first quarter, we know that 750, uh, you know that 760 mmHg is equal to one ATM. So we can easily convert no, that. So you have 750 divided by 760. Now this is ATM and then this is delta V. This is VF and that's VI. So you will get negative 6.2 liter ATM. However, you have to express the final answer in joules. We know that for every one liter ATM, you have 101.325 joules.